Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Pothon programming video log and today I'm going to be writing a tutorial on how to do prototype inheritance. So I have my classes set up here and this program right now just does basic class inheritance. I have a human class which is the base class and I have a worker class which is the class that inherits from human. Um, here's the class inheritance right here. Uh, the worker inherits the name variable from the class human, but I want to go a little bit above and beyond and give the worker prototype inheritance from the human prototype. But first I have to create a human prototype with something interesting inside of it. So what can all humans do? We're going to say all humans can talk. Make that a function. When you're doing a prototype, you want to make variables and functions that apply to all instances of that class. So for, for example, all humans can talk, but not all humans have the same name. So each human gets its own name. That's why we define the name variable inside the constructor. And all humans can talk, so we define talk inside of the prototype for human. So we're just going to say when a human talks, the console is going to output, hey, I'm a human, and my name is the human's name. So it's pretty handy because inside of the prototype, you have access to uh, variables inside the class human. Not private variables, but privileged variables. The this keyword um, defines a, when you add a, a, var a variable to the this keyword, it defines a privileged variable. A private variable would just be that. And you cannot access this from inside your prototype. You can access this, however. So, all right, so now we have a prototype for our human object. Let's test it out. We're going to go down here and we are going to test it out. So human.talk. We already created our human. Uh, the human's name is Tim. We passed it that parameter. So this output should say, hey, I'm a human and my name is Tim. So we're going to save. We're going to go to Chrome and we are going to refresh. And it works. Hey, I'm a human and my name is Tim. So let's go back to the program and actually do some inheritance here. So inheritance of prototypes is a little bit different than basic class inheritance, but in order to get both, you have to use both methods. So here's the class inheritance method, and now I'm going to write the prototype inheritance method. So actually go below my worker class. We're just going to say worker dot prototype equals object dot create human dot prototype and basically what we're doing here is we are saying make an exact copy of the human prototype so this right here and set the worker prototype equal to that so I could actually copy this code right here I can copy this and paste it right here and it would do the exact same thing as this right here but for the sake of being neat and tidy and whatever else that object.create function does i'm not sure if it just copies and clones the human.prototype or if it does a little something extra but this is the 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 way to do it so we're gonna set our worker.prototype equal to the human prototype with the object.create method so now when we go down here and we try to make our worker talk. Let's see what he has to say. By the way, the worker's name is John. And now we can test it out. Now the code outputs, hey, I'm a human and my name is John. So now we know that we inherited the talk function from the human class, from the human class's prototype, which is exactly what we were trying to do. 
So now I'm going to show you one more thing you can do with prototype inheritance. And I think I'm going to wrap up the tutorial after that. One thing that's cool about JavaScript is everything is just really fluid. So it's really easy to work with all this stuff and change things around. So actually, I'm not going to write it here. I'm going to write it right here. If you were to override one value in your prototype, even though there's only one function in the human prototype, we're going to override it right here. And we're going to say worker.prototype.talk equals function. Um, and we're just going to make him say, hey, my name is plus his name. And then the job. So he's going to say, hey, my name is John, and I am a desk jockey because the value we passed him for name is John, and the value we passed him for job is desk jockey. So this should work. And by doing this, by setting this explicitly right here, we override the talk function that we set when we set the worker's prototype to equal the human prototype. So that's just a, a way to override a function in your prototype. So I'm going to go out here and test the code. And as I thought it would be, it's, hey, my name is John, and I am a desk jockey. Now, I am going to do one more thing, actually, show you guys one more thing that's pretty important when you're doing prototype inheritance, and that is working with the constructor. Because right now, this, this function right here is my class constructor for human. But the constructor variable that's part of the prototype object does not point to human. It points to object because all objects in JavaScript are, they inherit from the object class. So all objects in JavaScript come from other objects because everything in job, JavaScript is an object. The classes, the variables, the objects, everything is an object. So we actually have to be explicit here and tell the prototype that its constructor is the human constructor right here. And when we do that, we can come down here and we can append this a little bit and say, I am a and see what shows up right here. It should be the name of the constructor that I just typed in up here, which is human. So let's go back and test our code. Oh, cannot read property. Let's see what I did wrong. Maybe I don't need that prototype in there. Yeah, there we go. So now the output is, hey, my name is John, and I am a desk jockey. I am a human, because we are using that constructor.name to find out what the constructor is. So now, when you want to check what the type of an object is, you can just go right ahead and check it by using this constructor variable that you set on the prototype. So I'm going to set the prototype constructor for worker to uh, worker, not human, worker. And as you can see, I'm not using a string. I'm actually using a reference to the worker class constructor. So now I save that. Let's see what the output is. Should be worker. Hey, my name is John, and I am a desk jockey. I am a worker. So this is great when you need to test what kind of object an object is. Say you're comparing, um, say we expand on this example a little bit, and we have 
human, we have worker, and then we we expand it and have welder, and we have um, desk jockey classes. And you can compare your two work. Is my worker a desk jockey or is my worker a welder? And you can use the class constructor and the prototype constructor variable to test that. And it comes in handy when you need to know what type an object is. So anyway, this is how you do prototype inheritance. Um, there's a lot more to cover on the subject of inheritance. There's multiple inheritance. I'm not going to get into that. But this is basics of just how to do prototype inheritance, which comes in really handy. And I hope you learned something from it. Tried my best to explain everything here, so hopefully I did a good job. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead, like, and uh, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.